Hi, this is Salahuddin with lecture number seven. And the lecture is about the development of party system under William III and Queen Anne. Uh, we have talked about the um, Act of Union of uh, England and Scotland in the previous lecture. In this lecture, we will talk about the the party, uh, the development of party, how the party uh, evolved with the passage of time, and specifically with the ruling of uh, William III and Queen Anne. Uh, the proper and opposite development of the party uh, evolved in these two eras under William III and Queen Anne. Though these parties were existing prior to the uh, these two and in the era of uh, the uh, William and uh, Queen Mary or Queen Anne, but but specifically and and to the point uh, how they appear on the on the on the world or how they appear on the on the Parliament, it took place in the era of these two, uh, 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 William three and Queen Anne. Uh, William, who came to the throne, we talked about in the Glorious Revolution, and from 1689 to 1695, uh, William selected his ministers from both the parties, the Whig and the Tory. Uh, so, uh, but due to their differences, the government could not function properly. And we will also talk about the uh, the uh, really the, the ideology, the political ideologies, the religious ideologies, and their policies of the two party, the Whig and the Tory. So under William and William would select ministers uh, at that meantime from sixty nine from sixteen eighty nine to ninety five. 1095, he would, uh, under the three year, definitely the action would take place after three years, uh, as we talked in the Act of Settlement, uh, the, uh, the, uh, in the Bill of Rights, uh, that the election would take place uh, after three years, after every three years. So, um, uh, William III selected his ministers from both parties, from the Whig and the Tories. And uh, he would choose his ministers on the basis of his merit, uh, on the basis of merit without considering their parties. Uh, the minister, uh, uh, the ministers uh, had party differences and they were entrusted in party matters uh, uh, rather in the official work. Thus, the, these, due to these differences, this, the, the government, the administration could not move smoothly. Uh, Thus, the, the, the William, uh, 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 this was the, the development of the, uh, the, the party under William III, that how the, the rise of Whig and the rise of the Tory took place. Uh, uh, as we discussed that the system could not sm move smoothly, or run smoothly due to their differences and there were, and, and those differences were taken mostly per personally uh, are on the basis of party rather um, uh, taking uh, uh, care of the interest of the country uh, due to which uh, the system could not uh, move smoothly and they would al always fight in the in the parliament so uh, the William uh, had to give up this policy uh, choosing minister from both the parties uh, <clears throat> this is a slight background to the development of the party and we will talk about the the ideologies, the mottos of both the parties. We will also talk about the rise of the Whig party. We will also talk about uh, the uh, Tory party and uh, we will also talk about the um, basic principle uh, uh, of the party system of government. And we will also talk about the development of party uh, in the reign of Queen Anne, uh, who was the uh, um, daughter of James II. Uh, how the uh, the Whig party uh, rise? In 
1695 William gave up his old policy and chose all his ministers from the Whig party as we discussed the reasons why right so he gave up his old policy choosing minister, ministers from the both the parties now he uh, choose his ministers from the single party and that was the Whig. Uh, why? Because he could not uh, win the favor of uh, his uh, uh, of his party in the in this war against France. And there was a war against France and that war was uh, also uh, uh, with the support of the um, uh, in the context of the um, Spanish succession in the war was uh, there was a kind of cold war or the proxies uh, that were uh, in the modern term that uh, that were taking place between england and france because they were two great powers at that time so the that war when uh, glorious revolution uh, took place started from the 1689 and uh, lasted till 1697 so uh, how the Whig arose uh, this is the topic uh, the Whig party arise uh, uh, because uh, uh, William gave up his old policy of choosing ministers from both the parties, the Whig and the Tory. And this time he chose the Whig party because uh, he could not succeed with this policy of war against France. Uh, the Whig minister popularly known as Janta party and the House of Common had a majority of uh, Whig. So William had little difficulty and and uh, in, in running uh, his administration. Uh, with the lapse of time, it become uh, a rule to appoint ministers from a majority party. So the, pa the, the party which uh, uh, win the majority, definitely the minister would be taken from, the, from that same party um, uh, to run the administration. In, in the, the majority was in the House of Common. So the majority of Whig was there in the House of Common in the 1695 election. Thus, uh, the the ministers that were um, taken by the the by the king was only from a single party, and that party was the Whig party. Why William chose the Whig party this time? Uh, because uh, William was invited by both the Whig and the Tories, though it. Uh, in the start, therefore, he would take ministers from both the parties. But now, uh, the Whig uh, uh, party was uh, was more in favor of the William in certain policies like the uh, act of toleration, religious toleration, in the war uh, war policy that the Whigs were in favor of war against France in some other policies therefore the wig uh, uh, for the wig uh, he had a, a kind of soft corner so thus the wig party arose uh, on the um, on the parliament uh, in 1695 uh, now coming to the rise of the tory party uh, people uh, had fed up from this policy of war and especially the, the Tory were also fed up from the war policy of the William and the Whig. So they had no alt alternatives uh, except the bringing uh, the ministers uh, are, are, to, uh, are to bring the, the Tory party and the parliament um, to uh, discourage this policy of war. So uh, in the, the uh, so William uh, uh, therefore, uh, in in 1695, uh, the Tory win uh, won the majority, and William had more difficulty in, in, in running the administration. In in the act uh, in the mutiny act of uh, uh, 1689, the uh, standing army was also reduced to minimum labor of uh, ten thousand soldiers. Uh, thus, the uh, uh, William III uh, was forced to choose his ministers from the uh, party because uh, from the Tory party because the Tory had won the majority in the parliament. So thus, uh, after the Whig, they come uh, then come the uh, the Tory party. Uh, <clears throat> there were two basic principles uh, of the party system of a government. A party can only form government if. Uh, 
if it, it fulfill these two principles so what were those two principles the first principle was uh, uh, it was necess necessary that the minister should belong to one party and the minister should belong to one single party right this was the first principle if a, a party is to form a government it must be single one and the second principle these these were principles right the two principles there one was single uh, party right ministers from single party and the second was the majority of the party the party must be in majority in the house of common in order to form a government so these two principles were set by the um, uh, basic principles of the party system of governments governance uh, <clears throat> so this is this took place uh, in the reign of William III, and and we know that uh, William III reign uh, starts from uh, sixteen eighty nine to uh, seventeen o two. Uh, in this meantime, uh, this happened: uh, the rise of the Whig Party, and then rise of the Tory Party, and then uh, basic principles were laid down under the reign of William III. Now coming to the party uh, struggle in the reign of Queen Anne, which starts from 1702 to 1714. Uh, both the parties were opposed to each other in their views in every field of life, right? They both the parties, as we already talked about, they were very much different in all aspects. So what, what were their differences? Now coming to the differences, um, they were, what the Whig would follow and what the uh, the try the Tory would uh, try to follow. So the first uh, 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 difference in the uh, in the Whig uh, and uh, uh, Tory party was the, um, uh, the on the differences uh, differences on the rule of law on the religious toleration and continues uh, are are um, stopping the war of uh, Spanish succession. So these were certain principles uh, that were uh, on which they were against each other uh, talking about these two parties. So what the Whig were trying or what the, what was the policy of the Whig party? So the policy of the Whig party was uh, uh, they believed in the rule of law. They believed in the religious toleration. They were more tolerant and uh, they were also in favor of the war policy continues uh, continuance of the war of spanish succession on the other hand the port the detroit party uh, were more conservative they were in favor of the divine right of the kingship and uh, discontinuance of the war of the spanish succession they were against the power uh, uh, they were against the the policy of the war against France and against Spanish succession. Thus, these uh, were their differences uh, between these two parties. And, and the, the, the Tory were also in favor of the uh, 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 restoration of the Stout dynasty. Stout dynasty uh, means uh, William and, and onward. Uh, and then judge one, judge two, and queen, queen. Right, so this all known is uh, Stout Dynasty. Uh, these were basic differences of the um, Whig and Tory party. Uh, then we have also uh, a literary support to the progress of the party system of government. Uh, so, from literature point of view, what support was given to both the parties and how they flourished in, in England and still they have. Uh, they were given literary support and probably in the history of English literature it was really the, the time in which the, uh, the the novel were the novel come on the literary stage the, the drama was already right from the 14th century and 13th century but this was the period which where novels were were about to, about to come on the stage and thus the uh, literary support was given to both the parties and both the parties had uh, literary people and those people were uh, writing in favor of their party um, uh, whom they were supporting who they were supporting 
does the uh, the writer like uh, Edison and Steli, who also is known as the uh, is the founder of the English novel, uh, begin to write in favor of the Whig Party? They were favoring the Whig Party, and on the contrary, uh, Swift and Daniel Depot, um, who were great figures in English literature, um, uh, write uh, wrote in 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 praise of the Tory Party. The people too began to uh, take a keen interest in the political affairs of the country, the party principles of both the, uh, the, the, the Whig and the Tory become more and more apparent and clear and distinct, which uh, greatly led to the progress of the party system of uh, government. Thus, the literary support uh, uh, polish and, and clearly defined the motto, the slogan of both the parties. So thus literary support was also one of the important factor in the development of the uh, party system of England. So recapping it back, uh, party system under William III and Queen Anne. First we talked about the uh, the parties that were uh, that, that, that was already there and later on it was flourished and the problems arise uh, in William III like he would choose minister from both the parties and which uh, where they could not uh, uh, run uh, the administ administration smoothly due to the differences of those political parties and they would uh, uh, they would fight on trapeze uh, mean um, small matters rather on the on the national issues so thus uh, he could not uh, move with the same policy of uh, choosing minister from both the parties and then come the rise of the Whig party and uh, who was uh, who was more in favor of William III and and in their uh, in policy of William Whig and William III they were more in, uh, uh, coinciding with each other, and then come the uh, rose of the Tory party, right? And then uh, we will al we also talk about the basic principle of the party system, like the party need to fulfill the uh, these two principles that we have talked in the uh, just before. And then uh, we also talked about the party struggle of uh, the, in the uh, in the reign of Queen Anne, and we also talked about the literary support uh, that was given to the parties, which led to the flourishing of the political system and, and political party system in England. So this is all about the um, development of party system in England under William III and Queen Anne. If there is any question regarding this topic, you must ask in the comment section. Uh, I'm reading your comments and uh, will uh, answer your question according to the, the according to this topic. So thank you so much for watching the video.